Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Nuggets News. Today we welcome back Brian from Sentiment, who's been a regular over the years to talk about everything that's happening uh, on chain. So welcome back, Brian. Great to be here, Alex. Looking forward to talking markets for the first time in a while. I think it's been maybe six months or so since we last did this. Yeah, in a pretty different market to six months ago. Um, we we're just talking beforehand about how there's a healthy mix of sentiment at the moment. I'm still seeing those people saying, uh, you know, we're going back to 12K. Um, we've had a good run, but I really think if you're a, a true believer, you're not really selling now just because it's had the run when we know where the cycle usually ends up and that type of thing. So what are your, I guess, general thoughts on where the market is at the moment? Yeah, so we're we're in a really interesting moment. You know, it's no secret that right around mid-October, markets just exploded. And I, I, the large consensus, and there's no confirmation of this, but the large consensus is that markets really started driving up when the powers that be started beginning to get confident that we were going to see some approvals of ETFs, which of course would grant increased exposure and dramatic differences in who can and who can't invest in crypto. So objectively, these approvals were considered a good thing back then, and they're still a good thing now, even though we have had a bit of a disappointing result after the SEC approved these spot ETFs about three weeks ago now. And I think a lot of people now are kind of sitting on their hands going, I don't know whether these ETFs were actually good. Should I sell now? Did the peak happen right when they were announced and now it's going to be all downhill? Uh, I think people have, especially people who've been in, in markets for a long time, are always worried about being tricked into believing something was good for crypto and then it turned out not to be. And there's just a yeah. buy the rumor, sell the news event like we saw with the Ethereum merge, for example, where everyone bought up if Ethereum, went up 20% in those final few weeks before it happened. Then there was a big drop down and everyone said, oh man, this actually wasn't a big deal at all. Turned out, you know, if you're patient, Ethereum's in a much better spot than it was last, what, two Septembers ago when that merge happened. But it's really just about how much patience you have. And I think right now there's a lot of impatience because a lot of traders expected us to climb up to 50K and beyond for Bitcoin's value and all the other assets would follow suit. And that just hasn't happened yet. Yeah, I think markets tend to always be forward looking. Um, so it was a lot of it was priced in because we had a great run from what 16K, wherever the bottom was on the different exchanges there up to 50. So it's been a great run. Um, and I think now but it's kind of this part of the cycle where we normally can have a pause in Bitcoin and let Ethereum and then alts run and that type of thing. So yeah, I think the forward looking markets now might focus on that Ethereum ETF. And, and then from that, I think we'll see basket style ETFs, top 10 or things with regulatory certainty, even like Litecoin and maybe something like um, Bitcoin Cash even, you know, we could see some things that maybe people aren't talking about at the moment that have been around for a while that are proof of work, um, considered safer um, and that type of thing. So yeah, I think that's all coming. Um, we might have a look on chain. I know some of the ETFs have shared their actual Bitcoin address. So I think there's still a healthy amount of accumulation on some of the ETFs while maybe GBTC people are selling out of um, and, and things like that. So there's lots of market dynamics in play, but I think it's all just really healthy for that long-term bull market still. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I, I think it's really just, uh, this is this is the almost expected outcome from the confirmations happening after everyone already assumed it was a foregone conclusion. And now you're kind of weeding out the people who were expecting an immediate impact and and they're all jumping off. So a year from now, I think we'll all be pretty happy that these uh, confirmations occurred. Well, I think we've got a few things lined up to get through in terms of all the great data that you guys have. So I'll just let you um, run it through it and I'll chime in from time to time if we've got any other questions or, or comments, if you like, Brian. All right, so I want to begin just by looking at the past 30 days. So this goes back to the very end of, of uh, 2023 when markets were kind of in this uh, hold phase. Uh, if we go back 30 days, it, it may not seem like it, but Bitcoin's just been about average, up 2%. And assets are kind of 50-50 in terms of being up or down compared to the end of 2023. We, of course, have a few standouts like Celestia, which you and I were talking about uh, right before this call started. Uh, Sui has been a big gainer, up almost double its market cap in the past 30 days. Bit Tensor, Arbitrum, Hex, uh, the controversial 
asset uh, owned by the controversial figure, Richard Hart, that's up 54% after getting plummeted uh, back at the end of 2023. So it could just be a regression to the mean. Um, notable drops, XRP has actually been struggling quite a bit, down 14%. Uniswap dropped 18 Near down 18 as well. Uh, Sats down 37%. Uh, Ordinals down 29, 30% after having a great uh, uh, November, December. Um, so it's been kind of all over the place. We can see that in the past week, you know, market caps have been rising once again. Uh, it's been encouraging after we were in a scary spot with Bitcoin getting all the way down to the 38Ks. And now it's back up right around 43K at the time we're recording this. So we've, we've seen some volatility for sure. Uh, and we can look at the actual ETF dashboards here and we can see how the volume has fluctuated uh, since, the, since the date happened. So this is, of course, only going to be on weekdays when the U.S. stock market has been open because, of course, the ETFs are part of the equities markets. So you can see on the 10th when things actually occurred, the 22nd did exceed it by just a tiny, tiny bit. But you're looking at this number of $3.88 billion in total ETF volume. And this was just one week ago from today, last Monday. So that was yeah. where it really peaked after, of course, you're going to get the most amount of hype on the day that the announcements happen. But you can see how quickly it dropped off. Like the 15th, it was about half of what it was uh, after just two stock market days before it. And yeah. it did rise gradually. We had that big day on Monday. And it's been kind of back and forth. The 24th was pretty poor and then actually had a nice rebound. But it's, it's kind of just fluctuated. We're seeing the overall volume of GBTC really going down. And then we have IBIT which is seeing a bit more recently, FBTC up and down. BitB is actually looking like it's going in the right direction. Hodl is ebbing and flowing at the moment. And ArcB and BTCO, I mean, they had their big days on the 22nd, it looks like, or at least ArcB did, and then uh, BTCO on the 18th. But overall, I would just keep track of this number on the total ETF volume side. So in terms of just the overall amount of health, it looks like it's just fine. I, I'm, I'm actually quite encouraged by the fact that we're still almost reaching $3 billion on the latest day that we had data for this on. So uh, keep yeah. an eye on the ETF. Yeah, go ahead, Alex. Yeah, I think the interesting thing there is those GBTC flows, which I think you're going to get to in the, in the negative, as we mentioned before. Right. Absolutely, yeah. It's been negative, I mean, about even on the 11th, and then it just started having some huge negative values here. So GBTC is clearly getting a pretty mass exodus at the moment while the ETFs are expectedly gaining more and more users over time. Fantastic. That's probably, yeah, encouraging to see, not, not a negative thing. Yeah, absolutely. So those who are thinking that the ETFs are, are a flop and, and not to the expectation that we thought it was, this is showing that they're just fine and that the ETFs are not to blame for the retrace that happened more than anything. That's where you can just attribute sentiment to, you know, the overhype that was related to the ETFs and the expectation that once they'd be approved, we would just go into blast off mode. As usual with the crypto crowd, things tend to be a bit overstated. And of course, this is good news, like we discussed, but to think that the immediate reaction would be a giant bull market that lasts months and months. You know, that's a little foolish, especially when we were already in one going back to October. You know, there has to be a bit of a letdown effect when the entire crowd believes that one thing is going to come true because not everyone is going to profit in a zero sum game. Yeah, yeah, no, I completely agree. Looking at some of the other metrics here, going to the on chain side for Bitcoin, transaction volume has certainly been up. This is on an hour, three hour scale, so let's just change it to like a week. And you can see right before. The ETFs were announced. That was actually when we saw our most transaction volume as people anticipated it. And then, of course, the next week when it actually was announced, it's still very high and started to drop down ever since. But it's still in a healthy range, absolutely. Active addresses, actually a bit disappointing. You know, for a, a sector that's been in a big bull cycle since mid October, 
you'd expect that the amount of unique addresses that are getting into crypto would be rising over time. But if you just look at this 30 day trend line, you know, it actually was peaking in late November and kind of dropped down ever since. And it's risen just a little bit in the last week here. That could be something that maybe changes um, because more money flowing through ETFs, which would only be sort of one active address in future. If we were seeing, you know, the majority of new money come through those traditional channels, it's very different to each user getting their own Bitcoin address and being active. Would you agree with that? Or a hundred percent? Yeah, we talked about that in in one of our calls right when the ETFs were getting approved. How it kind of is going to change the entire on-chain landscape because yeah. it, just by default you have to presume that there's going to be less traditional on-chain volume and some of the major ETF volume that's going on now is going to take away from that in a way that we're not going to be able to record the direct on-chain volume the way we did before. So we're, yeah. we almost have to look at it like a pre-ETF approval phase versus post-ETF approval and start measuring versus you know, how it's looked since January 10th and beyond. For sure. Yeah. So besides that, I mean, another, probably one of our biggest key indicators, you know, if you're watching this and you're wondering whether we're in an overvalued phase or a short or an undervalued phase, look no further than the average trading returns, because you are always, you should be conscious of how, not just where the price is relative where, to where it was a year or two years ago, you want to look at how the average traders are doing because these metrics known as MVRV, market value to realized value, they measure how essentially your opponents are doing. The, the other traders in crypto, they may be on the same side as you and they're all bullish on crypto or most of them are, but you need to see that there is a certain level of pain at some point to justify that prices are going to continue rising. And we finally saw that level of pain pretty much immediately after this big drop happened, the day after the ETFs were announced. And you started to see these negative returns, you know, negative 5% was the average return for any address that was active in the past 30 days. And it actually dropped all the way down to negative eight and a half a week ago today, January 22nd. Meanwhile, this yellow line shows the 365 day active addresses and what their returns are. And they've actually been in the positive for a long time. They at least got below 20% here, plus 20% when we started to hit that low point last week. And now they're climbing once again. But ideally, we actually want to see both the red and yellow lines. I'll remove the Z-score because that's not as important. But the red and yellow lines, if they're both below zero, like they were, for example, when the FTX collapse happened, that's where you're in a prime spot to historically be justified to buy the dip and profit pretty significantly. So you can see November, what is this? The November 9th, when I think all of the S word hit the fan uh, with the FTX news, that was when average trading returns for 30 day was negative 18%. Average trading returns for 365 day was way down at negative 46%. When you're buying into everyone else's pain, or there's blood in the streets, as Mr. Warren Buffett says, that's a pretty solid time to start adding onto your position, opening new positions, whatever you want to do, if you're into the mathematical approach, uh, which we are. Yeah, but that opportunity doesn't always come once you're well and truly into the bull market. That can right. be more of a, um, yeah, bear yeah. market. At the very least, if you're in a bull cycle, kind of like we've been in for the last three months, uh, you at least can kind of wait until things start to look a little more break even, right? Sort of like what we just saw last week when we got down to yeah. 38K and at least, you know, the short term traders were in the red. That's a pretty, yes. pretty solid time. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. And besides that, uh, I won't take too much time on this, but funding rate has been pretty neutral. You saw a few moments in early December where people were shorting. That's what these red bars are representing. And then they actually got really greedy here at the beginning of January, right before the ETF announcements came down, when people were at this point pretty much expecting the announcement to happen at, at any day now. And certainly once it did, we had that big drop because you can see how people were uh, pretty euphoric opening up leveraged longs. And when that happens, they tend to get punished and we see a downswing. Yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, whales, you can see pretty clearly, you know, there were certainly 
some pretty big increases in whale, whale activity going into uh, that that local top that finally occurred. I think it actually got to 48, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, this peak right here was, yeah, 48.4K. So you saw some huge whale transactions uh, about a five, six days before the announcement, and then this million dollar plus whale transaction spike, that occurred the day of. There were 3,391 unique $1 million plus transactions that occurred, uh, and that was pretty telling, in my opinion, that there was some profit taking going on these three days, the day before, or the day of, and then the two days after. Um, and that would be something of a warning flag. When you see a big spike like that, basically whatever direction the price is moving, the spikes are gonna imply there's a higher likelihood of the price doing a 180 in reversing direction. That's kind of how yeah. we approach whale transactions. And this was a, a pretty clear cut example. And there's some whale activity sort of coming back in now as well. So if, if they were smart and sold up in the high 40s and then they can now buy back in the low 40s, increasing their, right. their Bitcoin stack, then good on them. Exactly. And we're all about probabilities. You know, nothing's a certainty, of course. And, and markets always go in the, the direction of the crowd's least expected uh, expectation. So, um, yeah, probability-wise, when you start to see that whale transactions are increasing when you're dropping, that's actually a very good sign that they're doing some accumulation. And yeah. we can actually look and see the percentage of the supply held by wallets with 10 to 10,000 BTC. They're sort of in the low 66 percentage range right now. And that's a little bit of a concern. You know, you can see the trend since December 6th when it was at its peak. There's been a drop of about 1% of their holdings since then, even when we were rising a little bit, you know, this is kind of what we know, we call a, a bearish divergence, at least on the whale holdings end, because when you see the price go like this, while the holdings of those key sharks and whales go like that, you have to be a bit concerned, right? And we have stablecoin data that's been a bit delayed the last few days, but you can see that the trend has been going down, indicating their dry powder is concerningly going in the wrong direction. So when you see that Bitcoin profits are happening and they're, the whales and sharks are holding less and less BTC, you can at least hope that their stablecoin holdings are going up, but that's not the case right now. So in a vacuum, this would be concerning news. And you don't wanna just look at this by itself, of course, but just looking at one of our key indicators here, it shows that there might be some potential of further downswings unless they start to show some accumulation signs pretty soon. Now, I will say that due to the ETFs, there could simply just be a, a, an exodus of some coins, both on the Bitcoin and Tether and USD coin end, because they want to get into, e, to, into the ETFs. So that would be a justifiable reason that these lines have been going down so aggressively. Uh, but I, I still would be a bit concerned just by how much of a drop has been going on the last few months. Interesting. Yep. And we talked about this before the call, Alex, but really briefly, I did want to show Ethereum, at least one thing on it as well. Most of its on-chain metrics look somewhat similar to Bitcoin's. But one thing that is good to see is the average fees on the network, uh, despite the fact that it's up at $2,300, it's up. If we just look at the last three months, its market value has gone up a little under 30%, just shy of that. But its average fees on its network are still sitting below $2, which is a great sign. You know, you compare it to mid-December when we were seeing peaks of just below $7. Uh, it's shown that the network is still quite affordable right now. Hopefully, um, we don't get as clogged up, and you know, a lot of layer twos are now looking to do the NFTs and that as right. well. So, hopefully, it stays a lot less congested or doesn't get as bad as last time. Exactly. And speaking of NFTs, you know, we can see the, the big drop off uh, of the amount of volume we saw, just the overall trade counts, and we're seeing you know, double digit trade counts now. And you know, there could be some new NFT marketplaces that we aren't attributing to. But I, I can still say that there, there has been uh, a verified drop off that we saw in the summer in terms of the overall amount of trade. So I, I don't see NFTs picking up right now uh, the way maybe some people anecdotally are seeing.
but certainly once we really get into a bull market, whenever that is, I, I do see that NFTs will make a comeback. Uh, sometimes it doesn't, these things don't, you know, meme coins, for example, or DeFi assets, they, they kind of get ridden off. And once they get ridden off, that's when you start to see them make this furious comeback uh, from the yeah. people who see the opportunity to, to swoop in. I think, I think that just shows how, how crazy and how big a bubble it was at the time. Oh, yeah. Um, and they tend to be a late stage of the cycle thing, like after Bitcoin and ETH and all the alts run and everyone's um, very rich on paper with their crypto. They go, where else can I speculate? And that type of thing, the money rotates into NFTs is probably the final part of the, the cycle. Yeah, and I, I'm only speculating and I'm no expert on the NFT marketplace. I, I, I can simply view the data, but I, I do think that the difference is so staggering during this stretch, you know, where it just suddenly shot up in mid-March and then shot back down in early July. It, it makes me think that there was certainly some bot activity at play. Uh, there's certainly nothing that would stop wash trading, for example, being part of the NFT marketplace. And I haven't heard that be talked about a lot. Uh, but I wouldn't yeah. put it past, you know, this sector. Yeah, definitely agree. Yeah. Um, I also wanted to just look at the overall mentions of some of the most popular uh, subjects that we've seen and been tracking over the past year. First and foremost, you can see the Bitcoin ETF mentions, as you would expect, peaking on January 10th and then quickly retracing. But it's still being talked about on social platforms at a pretty increased pace compared to what we were seeing three months ago. So it's certainly not a dead topic less than three weeks after the uh, approvals occurred, but yeah. the, the drop off is pretty staggering. Um, you know, we should be seeing another CPI report soon in the U S so we should, ex we should see another spike. You can see what dramatic differences they have on prices whenever there is a CPI report uh, with the last mm -hmm. one. Uh, occurring on the same day as the ETF approvals, which was very under the radar for obvious reasons. And that undoubtedly had a contribution to the prices retracing the way they did. Um, yeah. Inflation as well, you know, there hasn't been as much talk about that because inflation isn't the scary subject like it was throughout 2022. But I think it's still worth keeping an eye on due to its correlation with crypto. Yeah, like... Um... Real world assets is certainly one that's been spoken about more and whether or not that's going to be like it's going to happen in the crypto world in a decentralized fashion or BlackRock are just going to take everything and yeah. put on chain. And, and the other one there that's I don't know if you've got any thoughts on is I still think people are um, underestimating the how well AI and crypto can go together when you've got all these computers starting to run things i guess they kind of need computer money to some degree like ai doesn't really work by having a bank account but it can work very well with you know bitcoin crypto stable coins and that type of thing as people are building out more um, technologies with ai yeah great call alex I, i'm looking I, I just typed in both ai or any combination of the words artificial and intelligence uh, across social media and we had this big uptick uh, that occurred a few days after the ETF approvals, and it hasn't hasn't stopped yet. There's still a notable increase in discussions related to it. Um, so I, I do think that that's going to be a very noteworthy topic to watch uh, and could have a, a dramatic driver in terms of market values as we progress in 2024 and beyond. Yeah, it's what, like I think that's why we can still have a super cycle this cycle and it, it kind of not be disappointing because um bitcoin for the last few cycles has just really been about investing and holding whereas this time around yeah we've got the etf which which helps people do that but then you've got ai which i think ties in with bitcoin then you've got bitcoin DeFi, which is the sector that we've been focusing most of our research on because once you can um some of these new protocols are letting you you know take out a mortgage against your bitcoin stable coins backed by bitcoin um, swapping assets, all this stuff that we saw um, come to Ethereum, if it's coming to Bitcoin in some way or another, it's another big, big driver for the super cycle. That's a great point. All of these different topics kind of have fluctuating impacts on the markets. And of course, we have the having to, right? So when you just see about see what kind of anticipation and hype there is around the April having, I do think that's going to be one of the biggest topics to keep an eye on especially anytime there's volatility, 
you know, crypto, crypto traders are looking for something to blame uh, or something to attribute a pump to. So you'll often see those kinds of topics start to gain a lot of legs and conversation whenever, you know, we see BTC pump by $3,000 or drop $3,000. And I'm very curious whether we're going to see a similar effect to what we saw with the ETF approvals where, you know, the month before, beginning in March, we start to see a ton of accumulation and prices start to rise. And then a big disappointing downfall after the having actually occurs without any issues. Or is it going to be yeah. the opposite, right? Is it going to be a bunch of stagnancy or like mild price dropping and then the halving happens and we suddenly take off? Um, I think those two, those two outcomes are probably going to be the most realistic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anything else you want to get through, Brian? Uh, I think the last thing is just a quick shout out to our newest model known as the Activity Matrix. I know there's a lot of altcoin uh, traders watching on both the Nuggets News end as well as Santiment's communities end. And what this model does is make it easy to have everything on one screen for you to see which altcoin networks are hot or cold at any given time. Basically, we measure you know, the current day of address activity or network growth or whale transactions key stakeholders, social dominance, exchange inflow, outflow, or even dormant activity, which is these last two metrics. And we look at how the current day looks compared to the past three months. And if there's a, a big uptick in, in that activity for that respective metric, you'll see it in red. If it's very cold and there's very little activity on that metric compared to the, the three month average, then it'll be in blue. And it's basically an intuitive, you know, blue is cold, red is hot, uh, color scale. And so yeah. like just looking briefly at this, for example, Bitcoin is kind of showing blue green, indicating it's actually colder right now than average. The network has significantly cooled down compared to the bull cycle, the big bull cycle that we saw in November and December. Um, and especially in recent days, you can see just in the last couple, some of these squares are turning blue, indicating, you know, we're seeing less whale transactions. Um, less discussion about Bitcoin compared to other assets, things like that. Uh, meanwhile, you can look at a, an asset that many of you may not have even heard of, like Marlin or like Uma, where you can see their, their name label is in orange and red, or API3. That's showing that those networks are particularly hot. Cartesi is another one that's popping up right now, or 0x. So these are just assets that are seeing a, a major... Uh, spike in things like unique addresses interacting on the network or new addresses being created. And it's a really awesome way to spot divergences out there. And you can even see the price returns. So I made it so that the, from left to right, it's showing the one day price change, seven day price change, 30 day price change, and 90 day price change. So you can actually compare, you know, is this coin really hot, but its prices haven't made a move yet. Those are usually a, yeah. a, a really great strategy to spot a bullish divergence when the network's getting hot, but price hasn't changed yet. Um, and vice versa, if the you know prices have been stagnant and you're just seeing a ton of cold squares, then be a little careful with that asset. And there's, of course, this leaderboard too, where you can just see the top 10 in terms of what their ranking is in the past 90 days. Uh, Ethereum today is having its third best day of new addresses created or network growth in the past three months. That's pretty significant. Uh, Litecoin having a lot of key stakeholder accumulation today. Yeah, that's great to see you guys innovating and always coming up with new products. But what we spoke about before, we may be Litecoin and Bitcoin Cash being perceived as regulatory safer. Mm -hmm. Interesting to see that there's some, um, yeah, ranked leaders holding those. Exactly. Yeah, Bitcoin Cash has seen a lot of uh, dormant activity. That's what this particular metric means. So there's quite a bit of uh, information that you can gather. And uh, the way I think a lot of our minds work is the less tabs and windows we have to open to see like the overlay of the entire crypto sector, the better. Uh, and that's yeah. how this was kind of designed to, to benefit people. 
Fantastic. Uh, anything else as we wrap up, Brian? No, I think that's a good spot, man. Um, I'm excited to see how the next few months go leading up to the halving. And uh, there are plenty of innovations and plenty of development activities still going on with assets that you probably haven't thought about for a while. Uh, but the look for projects. I always tell people, look for projects out there if you're trying to shuffle your portfolio that are still showing increasing or strong development activity, even when their prices are down. That's the sign of a yeah. dedicated team that's constantly looking to innovate and improve. And, uh, you know, objectively, if, if you don't know much about crypto yet, you can look at things like development activity on Santiment or on a, a GitHub repository and find some good stuff there. Yeah, fantastic. Well, guys, I'll put the links down below to follow Santiment. Um, they've got a range of, um, accounts and access to all their data that you can get from free um, up to the super premium stuff for VC funds and all that. So that'll all be down below as well as Brian's socials to follow along on Twitter and whatnot. But um, yeah, thanks as always for coming on, Brian. Absolutely. And shout out to Nuggets News. Uh, we still have an active discount code. If you put in Nuggets News when you check out on uh, Santiment, you get 25% off your first month. Fantastic. I'll put that down there as well. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Talk again soon. Cheers. Great chatting.